This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Jimmy first. Jimmy, how are you? Danny, very good, thanks, mate. Nice to uh, be on your channel. Thanks very much, pal. No, not a problem, not a problem. Um, you're fighting uh, the 25th of February, I believe, for the Central Area Lightweight title. Uh, how's everything gone in camp? That's the one, Danny boy. Uh, week tomorrow, um, everything's gone fantastic. Um, and I'm, you know, really good. I'm not just saying that. Um, I fought Brian Phillips uh, five months ago and my knee was giving me problems. Um, as you'll probably know, I'm not the youngest fighter out there. Um, but that's not been a problem this time. So I've been out sprinting. Um, I've had no niggles, no injuries on my hands, uh, which I've had in the past with sparring. So um, everything's gone absolutely bang on. And um, I'm sharp and ready to go, mate. We spoke to Justin Yule not long ago. He said you guys are, are kind of mates outside the ring. Yeah, well, I mean, we've, um, we know each other through the circuit. Um, we actually organised this fight back in whenever it was, a year ago or so, a um, year and a half ago before the lockdown hit. Um, I mean, now I'm meant to be fighting Steve Brogan um, a couple of years ago, actually, in, in, a in April coming up. Um, but then that fell through because it was literally two weeks before lockdown, the first one hit. Um, but yeah, Justin's a good lad. We get on, we know each other. We've messaged each other before. Um, we even organised a fight. He was in Fuerteventura at the same time as me and we met up for a coffee. So there's no animosity. There's no bad blood. Um, it's just, you know, it all goes out the window on fight night and we're uh, we're ready to go, you know, you and we've backed it out. <laughs> As you alluded to at the start, you're 40 years old, um, must be one of the older professional boxers in the country. Just just tell us the backstory. How did you get into boxing and, and why did you start as late as you did? It was just, um, I, I was always into like football, cricket, uh, tennis, other stuff. Um, and I was working in recruitment. I met my Nicky Betteridge, massive Ricky Atom fan. And he kept badgering me to uh, go down the boxing gym, the local boxing gym around the corner from where we worked, Halifax Boxing Club. Mm. And literally, I just went down just to shut him up. Um, and the rest is history, really. Um, I had 26 amateurs with Halifax Boxing Club. Um, I got into it. Um, had my first amateur at the age of 29. Um, got Yorkshire champion, national semi-finalist, just lost out to Eli Murphy by one point. Uh, beat the best dad in Liverpool. Had a good little run of it. Um, and then, you know, I dilly-dallied a while for a little bit in the last couple of years of the amateurs. Um, but a lot of people were saying, you should go pro, you've got this style. I was still beating 25-year-olds, you know, and I was like thinking to myself, don't be daft, you know, you're a bit old here. You know, this were at age of 36. And I thought, you know what, I've got to do it. Otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll regret it. So no regrets in life. And I turned pro, had a good... Uh, had a good start, 10, 10, 10 fights, 10 wins, three by three by stoppage. And, um, you know, I've stopped some lads that don't usually get stopped. So um, doing doing all right and um, still going really strong, mate. Still feel fresh as a daisy. <laughs> had you ever had any sort of experience before the age of 28, 29? Like, had you ever picked up a pair of gloves when you were a kid or junior age or anything like that? Nothing. To be honest with you, um, I wasn't that much of a boxing fan, to be honest with you. Um, I just, um, I w I'd watch all the big fights, you know, Ricky and Pacquiao and, um, you know, uh, Bruno Tyson back in the day when I was a kid. Um, but not at all, not at all. I wasn't a massive boxing fan or anything. I just went down to shut my mate up and it were almost like boxing found me. I, you know, I didn't go out looking for boxing Um I didn't like to think, oh, I want to be a boxer and blah, blah, blah. It just it just happened. I mean, I were, before that, I were off travelling. I were, I were enjoying travelling. I were, uh, you know, the, you know, just, just you know, going out on a weekend just as normal normal folk do. Do you know what I mean? I, uh, I was just smoking weed and just being a happy-go-lucky guy. Do you know what I mean? I were, you know, that were, but then, yeah, got into boxing and it kind of took a hold of, uh, of the past uh, 14 years. You must be something of a natural talent then to, to come to it so late and get to the level you've got as quickly as you did, especially as an amateur. Um, I don't know about the natural talent side. Um, 
I've got a big heart and, you know, there's a bit, a bit of toughness that I didn't actually read. I've never been a fighter. Um, might have had one, one or two fights at school that were about it, you know, a few scuffles here and there. But, you know, I've always been a lover, not a fighter, you know. Um, but I just, yeah, it, I think my first... My first 10 amateurs, I were unbeaten, but I would just literally, I would, I would just going on adrenaline, a bit of fear, and just, and I, and I just had this crazy style where I just bulldoze people, and um, I've got a bit of an unorthodox style, so, but over time, I've definitely uh, picking up talent and uh, improving, I'm still improving, under my trainer, uh, Mark Hurley, and my other trainer, Chris Aston. Um, my trainer and manager and we've uh, we, yeah, we've been really uh, working hard and uh, during lockdown particularly we, we slowed things down a bit did a lot of work there at the Dickies gym and with Chris Aston Northern Fitness um, we were working in parks we were out you know we were training but me Corey O'Regan Callum Simpson was an absolute top talent both of them lads top talent and um, we're all bouncing off each other absolutely bouncing off each other and uh, We've been doing a lot of technique and a lot of stuff. I mean, Mark's intricate. He uh, studies a lot of those Becks. He studies the Kazakhs, the Russians, the Cubans. And, um, you know, we've, I'm learning a lot with him. And, and I took myself to, to Cuba, uh, Mexico. I've just been to Mexico, I was sparring WBO, Youth Intercontinental Champions. And I've sparred some, you know, elite fighters, to be honest with you, you know, some top fighters. Sparred Josh Warrington, sparred Maxi Hughes, Isaac Lord, and plenty of rounds with him, loads of rounds with Josh Whale. Um, you know, so I'm just, yeah, I'm, and I always hold my own. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still going strong, mate. Oh, great stuff. And you, you said you were in recruitment when you first got into boxing. Do you still work now alongside your boxing career or are you full time as a pro? Well, literally about six months ago, September, um, I, I quit my job. For good, I, I was in. I was supplying wine, so I'm going out selling wine um, to bar, pubs, restaurants, etc. And uh, I think, like a lot of people, uh, I reevaluated things during you know this pandemic, and um, and I just had enough for working for for someone else now. So yeah, this last six months I've been doing a little bit of PTing with the boxing and um, concentrating on boxing. So this this camp's been. You know, training twice a day, and um, you know, really focused on getting this, uh, getting this title, and maybe making history. I don't know when the last forty-year-old won a central area title. You know, I, don't I wish know. I could so, tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not known as a, as an historian, but uh, <laughs> I can't imagine there'd be many. Maybe in the kind of distant past when fighters did tend to carry on a bit longer, but I can't imagine yeah. it's because central area titles don't get competed for as much as they they probably should anyway. So it's got to be a rarity. Yeah, I mean, um, I'd like to find out when when the last, uh, you know, 40-odd-year-old, 40, I'm 41 in March, so, you know, I'll be uh, holding that title when I'm 41 and, uh, you know, standing proud. With, we'll, have, uh, with, we'll have to speak to the central area chairman and see if we can find out. Yeah, it'd be interesting, yeah. Definitely, Danny, yeah. That's great stuff. Have you got a, yeah. a family outside of, of the ring, obviously? Uh, you know, wife, kids, anything like that? Don't have any kids, um, but I've got a beautiful uh, girlfriend. We've been together for uh, four and a half years now, Paula, Paula Roberts. And um, she's great. She's supportive. And, um, yeah, no, really chilled out. So, you know, we're like having holidays. I've got a camper van, so, you know, after nice. fights, we'll go off. Yeah, I had a, had a good do it up in Scotland and stuff. Went to Hebrides um, last year. So, yeah, just, um, yeah, but I just keep things, keep things low key. And I've been lucky that, you know, I mean, um, I, I just didn't get around to having kids. So, you know, I've, it's kept me uh, fairly youthful and I've always been, uh, you know, always, always been training in the gym and, um, you know, doing doing what I want, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Do you think it's a help in some ways that you did start quite late on in life because you're still kind of fresh and you still approach it with a fresh mindset as well? You're not tired of the sport having done it since you were eight, nine years old. Yeah, you've hit nail on head, really, Danny. Um, I've got low miles. I've not been in many wars at all, um, if any, really. My me and Brian Phillips had a belt in Barnstorm in yeah. 10 rounder, which got uh, top 10 fights of 2021, actually. They got my name wrong. 
Um, but the correct VIP mentioned, yeah, me and him, we had a, we had an absolute cracker. Um, it was just below Avanitian and Josh Kelly's mm. um, fight, actually, and uh, Yusik and Joshua number three. So, what did they call you then? Uh, Jimmy Flint. <laughs> Bloody, yeah, got my, name, got my name wrong, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so no, going back to what you said, low miles on the clock, feel fresh. And yeah, I think it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. And uh, that's why I'm still doing what I'm doing. Have you got yeah. like a, a ceiling on your ambitions in boxing? Have you considered how far you can go? To be honest with you, I um, when I turned pro, I thought oh, I'm not going to be fighting. Sorry, I'm not going to be fighting much longer after 40. But now I've hit 40, I'm nearly 41, and I'm still doing what I'm doing in the gym and sparring. You know, the guys that I'm sparring and getting, you know, doing doing great, getting better at some 20-odd-year-olds, you know, it's I'll just keep going, Danny, you know, as long as I don't have any bad injuries. Um, I'll just keep going. I mean, I'd love to win a few titles, you know. Um, British title would be an absolute dream. Um, but we need to get, you know, take care of this one first, take care of uh, the central area title, Justin Newell, next week. And um, and then we'll see where we go from there. I mean, holding your own inspiring with the likes of Josh Warrington, who is a, a former world champion, may again be a world champion next month. That must give you an idea of, you know, you can go beyond central area level, certainly. I feel I can. Um, Josh Wales' dad, um, who's been around the game a long, long time, Mick Wales, the top bloke, real good guy, man. Um, when I sparred Josh for the first time, going back probably four, four or five years ago, we've, and we've done a lot of rounds together, he was like, this guy's got to be able to win a British title, surely. Um, so, and yeah, I've gathered experience. I took myself to Cuba, like I said, because I thought, you know, I've um, maybe I need to do a bit of catching up. You know, so I've um, I've studied the the sport and um, and took myself out of the comfort zone. Went to uh, places like Manila, the Philippines, and sparred. Did a week's training camp out there. You know, Cuba, Havana. Went to Rafael Trejo uh, boxing gym and, sp- and you know sparred. You know, but that wasn't all of it. That was twelve days, fourteen days of training every day. You know, with them in thirty five degree outdoor you know, outdoor um, uh, gym. So, yeah, it, it sets me up well um, tra- uh, sparring these guys, Josh Warren. And, you know, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's hard as nails, as tough as they come as Josh. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's set me in good stead, I think. T- tell us some of the things you've learned on your travels. You, you've said, obviously, Cuba, Philippines, Mexico. What, what are some of the lessons you've taken from those places? It's a good question. Um, Better footwork in Cuba, little 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 intricate moves. Um, Mexico, little certain little things that they do out in Mexico, um, just little flinches and there's 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 a few things. I don't want to say too much, um, <laughs> but we picked up some stuff. You know, bloody hell, southpaws in Philippines. They were all southpaws and they all wanted to pop at me. They all wanted to go. They were like itching to jump in. And um, yeah, the Philippines was another. I mean, and training in that heat, you know what? I mean, absolutely. I'm 35 degrees heat, and it was pumping, you know, the, the heat was pumping down. Um, went out to Fuerteventura, trained out there with Adam Bailey as well at MTK. Mm-hmm. Um, so just picking up little, you know, different styles, different little techniques, little train, different training techniques. And, and I think you just pick up little bits here and there, which, has added to my arsenal, really, I think. And you said earlier you've got a, an unorthodox style. For people out there who haven't seen you fight before, what, what can they expect? I'm all out action, a um, bit tricky. Um, angles, I throw punches from uh, angles that, that a lot of people don't usually um, uh, throw. And I'll be hard to actually train for if you know what I mean, it's quite a, a style which is quite difficult to replicate. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, you know, I, I can do a bit of both. I can box on the inside. I can box on the back foot, um, although I never used to be able to. Um, it, like people used to say, 
you know, step back, go, you know, like uh, Grant Mitchell down at um, Sheffield. I fought over there on a few Sheffield shows and a few other like, just go, you can, you can go backwards, you know, Jimmy. So I used to just be all out, but, you know, barrage of blows. Um, so um, just expect all out action, but, you know, a lot of trickiness uh, is developing uh, under the wing of Mark Early at Dickie's gym. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm, like I say, my trainer and manager, Chris Aston, and I've been loyal to them all since. And we've, uh, yeah, we've, uh, yeah, we're, we're, I'm still learning. I'm still learning like you always do in boxing. You know what I mean, Danny? Great stuff. Mate, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Obviously, very best of luck for, for the big night. And um, yeah, let's do yeah. this again afterwards, if that's all right. Absolutely, Danny. Um, yeah, when I'm Central Area Champion, well, I'll, I'll have it over my shoulder for you. But um, it's been a pleasure being not on your channel. Thank you very much, pal. Thank you.